This video will utilize auditory tones and flashing images to stimulate your memory of the news content featured this week on our website. Japanese officials have begun a search for innovative engineers. They need new technologies to decommission three damaged nuclear reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. Workers at Tokyo Electric Power Company plan to start removing melted fuel around 2020. They don't even know where the three cores that escaped the reactors are now. The reactors at the plant suffered meltdowns three years ago. It was the result of a powerful earthquake and tsunami that hit Japan's northeastern coast. The removal of the spent fuel is the biggest challenge in decommissioning in the decommissioning process. But the radiation levels inside the reactor buildings are too high for anyone to get close. Burning their way with full nuclear fission into Earth's crust. Above all issues on Earth, we need to stop this radioactive release. But what we need to stop it with has not yet been invented. So, what is needed is a scientific think tank to be formed to attempt to invent something to stop this release. Industrial engineers gathered in Tokyo to discuss technologies needed for the operation. The current plan is to fill the reactor containment vessels with water to shield workers from radiation. But officials say it may be difficult to locate damaged parts in the containment vessels and plug any leaks. Uh, be careful. Do not burn yourself. You have your calendar in the sink and just slowly pour your water into it with all your ZD. They're calling on the engineers to study ways to block radiation without using water. The officials also ask engineers to develop imaging technology to monitor fuel debris in a radioactive atmosphere. The government will begin accepting the proposals in June. Now, the people in charge of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have been looking into the latest problem with a water treatment system. They think it was another case of human error. On Tuesday, workers suspended one of the three lines of the advanced liquid processing system. They'd found it was not reducing buildup of calcium. Managers with Tokyo Electric Power Company say a valve used to inject a chemical agent had been closed. The workers opened the valve on Wednesday and restarted the system. Last month, they shut down a line to fix another problem, and managers say they may have forgotten to reopen the valve when they resumed operations. The system is capable of removing almost all nuclear materials from contaminated water. Workers have been testing it since last year and hope to put it into full operation before the end of the year with the government and construction industry are trying to attract more women into the field. They hope their efforts will help solve a labor shortage. Infrastructure Minister Akihiro Ota met with industry representatives. He said they should make a joint effort to create a welcoming environment for female workers. The goal over the next five years is to double the number of women in the industry from the current 90,000. They agreed to draw up an action plan in the coming months. That will include measures to hire more female workers and improve their skills. And one idea is uh, for creating a better environment is to set up more women-only facilities at work sites. The construction industry needs more workers to rebuild areas affected by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Officials also expect demand to rise ahead of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. We are following a developing story tonight from the Carlsbad area. Today, the Department of Energy released a 300-page report highlighting serious problems at the waste isolation pilot plant near Carlsbad. The report comes two months after a radiation leak was detected there. Lauren Hanser got a closer look at the DOE's investigation. In the report, the Department of Energy says the above-ground radiation leak was preventable. The report says a measurable portion bypassed the HEPA filters and was discharged directly into the environment from an exhaust duct. Investigators said that would not have happened if the filter had been properly maintained. But that's not all. While investigating, the board found a list of out-of-service equipment. Investigators say there is an acceptance to tolerate out-of-service equipment, and prioritization of maintenance of equipment is not given unless there is an immediate impact. Also noted were issues in the emergency response. The report says the emergency management program was not adequately structured, and it did not classify the emergency and implement protective actions in a timely manner. Federal investigators said a dissipating culture of safety caused the leak. 
They say nearly 20 emergency drills were canceled last year, and this highlights a lack of proper oversight and sets the expectation that safety is not a priority for management. Lauren Hansard, KOBI Witness News 4. WIP investigators still have not been able to identify the exact source of that underground leak. WIP released a statement this afternoon about the report. It says the plant is already implementing changes to address some of the problems. But the IAEA has the nuclear scientific community turned into puppets. Instead, our once trusted scientists speak of this disaster as though it is nothing to worry about and compares it to natural not harmful potassium-40 radiation in bananas and licking iPhone chargers. <laughs> These levels of radiation are just above natural background at the WIP site. And so there is no expectation that those measurements for you or your children or anyone else will show exposure on a long count. They're down in the levels of licking your iPhone charger. And I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to equate radiation exposure to something that you can... What the fuck? They're treating us as though we are as mindless as snails and watching us fall ill and die. Their argument will be that they do not want to create mass hysteria. Well, by not giving the world the truth, they are taking away our chances of survival. And I believe that puts them into the category of being mass murderers. In northeastern Japan was once renowned for a cherry blossom viewing spot, but access has been restricted since the earthquake and tsunami three years ago. Now a man who had been tending to the cherry trees for decades was given special access to see them again. The town of Tomioka is located just six kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Three years ago, an earthquake and tsunami crippled the plant, and the government issued an evacuation order for the entire town. Residents have been living in temporary housing outside of the town ever since. A famous row of about 400 cherry trees used to be the pride of the town of Tomioka. It was considered one of Fukushima Prefecture's most spectacular spots for viewing cherry blossoms. 80-year-old Tadasu Suenaga used to live in Tomioka. After the disaster, he moved from one evacuation shelter to another. Now he is living with his family in Fukushima City. Suenaga used to work in the tourism office of Tomioka Town Hall. One of his jobs was tending to the cherry trees in Tomioka. He would prune their branches and keep pests at bay. I took care of the trees for about 50 years. I worked hard because I wanted tourists to enjoy the cherry blossoms. For the third year in a row, Suenaga was forced to spend cherry blossom season away from Tomioka. He worries about the cherry trees in his hometown, even when he's looking at other blossoms. Because no one has taken care of the trees since the disaster, he wonders if they are still healthy. This year it snowed quite a lot, so I'm particularly worried about the old trees. Their branches can get very brittle. But in April, Slenaga was offered a rare chance to visit the trees. A bus tour of the cherry blossoms was organized for the residents of Tomioka who are still not able to live in the town. He joined the tour, eager to check on the cherry trees in Tomioka. Finally, the cherry blossoms appeared in front of him. He was only reunited with the trees for five minutes. But he says he could feel the power of nature because the cherry blossoms were just as beautiful as before. I was happy to see them in full bloom. I hope I can take care of them again someday and restore them to their original state. Suenaga is waiting for the day he can begin to look after the cherry trees again 
so they can be passed on to the next generation.